Hi, um, thanks so much for having us. Um, so my name is Will Josephson. I am a business development at Florence. And, this and is... I'm Vanessa Mann and I am um, look after product development and implementation. So I guess we'll just um, head straight into the presentation. Yeah, cool. Um, so start by just giving you a bit of background about Florence. Um, so at Florence, we believe life is a journey. Every day, our lives are made up of multiple journeys, um, like going to the GP for a consultation. Um, in all our endeavours, we've been hugely focused on creating better journeys, um, which make for better lives. So better for us is safer, faster, easier, more engaging and empowering, and less distraction and waiting time. So Florence's uh, story begins in a Wellington bar, actually, uh, where a kiosk was turned around, um, sorry, a touchscreen was turned around for the uh, customers, and they could start ordering their own uh, food and drinks. Um, and that was the beginning of our big brother, uh, Fingermark. And now Fingermark's a world leader in the QSR uh, technologies uh, with restaurant giants like KFC, uh, Taco Bell. Um, and now in 2018, uh, we made the decision to spin off Florence um, and allow to focus on the health sector. Um, when we looked at the health se sector, it was just like the QSR industry where there was an underutilization and very limited use of technology and data. And the results were inefficient operations and constrained capacities, interrupted staff, and uh, dissatisfied patients. So it seemed like a no-brainer to jump boots and all into developing a integrated uh, hardware and software solution that would deliver game-changing outcomes for staff, managers, patients, and owners. Um, so how, who are we? We're a really small uh, team. We've got five of us, uh, four, four in Havelock and one in Brazil. Um, and we uh, deliver combined kiosk and hardware self-check-in turnkey solutions, and they're both integrated and non-integrated uh, solutions. Obviously, the integrated solution we uh, have partnered with uh, Medtech, and we've had a long, wonderful standing relationship with them, and um, got many years to look forward to. Um, we do this by listening to our clients and understanding their business needs and, and their workflows. Uh, so we develop self-check-in systems that allow practice administrators to customise kiosk selections and preferences to meet their requirements. Um, and Vanessa is going to go back into go into this a little bit later on. Um, so we'll have a quick look at the Florence journey where we started. So as I mentioned before, we kicked off in about 2018. Um, a lot of the focus was on the DHBs back then um, for patient tracking. Uh, we also did um, a prescription tracking system. Um, and they're still being utilised and they're still available. Um, then we sort of decided, well, let's, let's focus on uh, integrated, non-integrated uh, patient uh, checking kiosks, um, which we've been sort of focusing on um, much throughout the time since then. Uh, and again, with MedTech, we've got some pretty cool things happening. Um, we've got the uh, Hastings Health Centre, which is um, a really uh, great, great uh, uh, customer bar has got six kiosks in there um, and it's really re revolutionized the, um, the, the check-in systems there and taking the pressure off the frontline staff um, and we've got some new exciting things happening down the track which we'll go into later. Mm. Well so just on this um, journey here just in the top you'll see those are um, our current clients and then in the bottom um, those are the systems which we've integrated to. So, um, you know, we do do um, quite a bit of integration work with a lot of different um, vendors um, that the clients um, are working with. Cool. So um, well, I'll talk about the uh, in integrated patient self-checking kiosk since, um, you know, this is uh, about, um, you know, integrating with patient management systems such as MedTech. So these are just a few of our um, customer sites at the moment. Um, cool. So why a, um, you know, Alex integrated kiosk? So basically um, with, with the integration, we, as soon as a person checks in, there's the automatic arrival of that patient in the appointment book in the um, MedTech um, system. And um, when the patient checks in, we're only checking in those patients that have a valid appointment on the day. So um, if the patient doesn't have a valid appointment, um, they're not going to be able to check in. Um, with our kiosk, it's, it's just a very um, simple, and later on we'll show you a demo, but it's just um, a simple uh, entry of the name or the NHI, you know, since most people don't know the NHIs, although more people do now, now that um, you know, they've been using a, a COVID testing station. Um, so basically they just type in their name and then they validate it with their date of birth. 
Um, and our system only requires the patients to know the, um, the day they were born and the month they were born. Um, and it's funny actually, because having been out on the field and watching people, um, it's quite a number of people, particularly elderly ones, do not remember the year that they were born. So um, it's a bonus that you only have to add, uh, enter in your month and your day. Um, and then basically, uh, once they go through the check-in process, they'll have a screen where their um, demographic details come up and they're able to update those demographic details. And when those um, are updated, they get automatically updated um, back in the MedTech um, patient management system. Um, we're also working with um, Alex's uh, team at MedTech um, to add a um, function where we can register um, patients and those patients that can also you know our patients that check in for walk-ins or emergency care type patients so at the moment um, our check-in system is only checking in patients with booked appointments but this will allow patients that don't have booked appointments um, to be able to register and check in as well on a kiosk oh. so so why choose a Florence kiosk because there are quite a number of um, kiosks out there um, with Florent Kiosks, you know, we're really about, or there's quite a number of chicken systems, I should say, out there. Um, we, we're all about equitable access. So, you know, there are a lot of self chicken apps out there that can be downloaded on smartphones or, you know, they're part of um, sort of booking and appointment um, systems, which people can utilise from their smartphones. What we found is, you know, not everybody has a smartphone. In fact, I've seen that many people don't have smartphones. <laughs> And um, also people don't have unlimited data plans. And so they, you know, can't access their smartphones, um, you know, when they're not connected. Um, and again, you know, smartphones just, they don't um, all work equally well. So what you might see on, you know, an iPhone is quite different to what your experience might be on a um, Android. So um, a kiosk, um, you know, everybody can use the kiosk. You, you, don't need any special equipment. Also, um, the physical presence. So um, the touchscreen kiosk that we have, um, there's a good picture there, you know, a large, it's a, just a large screen real estate. So even though it's large, we don't you know, clutter it with a lot of stuff. We keep the app quite simple. Um, and basically it just works like a giant iPad or a tablet. So, you know, people are quite used to that. Um, also what we've noticed is that, you know, patients are less likely to bypass a bank of, you know, sort of prominently positioned kiosks. So there is the picture of the ones that we have at Hastings Hill Centre. They have um, sort of a foyer, which um, where they've put in three kiosks. And as soon as the patient comes out of the lift or up the stairs, they're faced with these three kiosks. And, um, you know, people just go to them uh, to, to go and sign in. Another reason is um, to support local. So all our kiosk hardware is designed and manufactured um, and assembled in Danivert in New Zealand. Um, what we've found is that people like our kiosks because they're strong and sturdy and they're aesthetically pleasing. So there's quite a number of kiosks out there and um, you know we have looked around at other kiosk manufacturers, um, but we've not come across any that are quite as sort of sturdy and solid as the ones that we um, are getting from our manufacturer in Danny Burke. Um, also, um, as Will mentioned, um, you know, we learn from experience from um, our big brother Finger Mart. Um, and so, you know, that they've been down the track of looking at all the different types of um, kiosk hardware out there. Oh, so I'll move on. So why the Florence Self Chicken um, app? Um, we have an extremely easy to use kiosk interface. Um, you know, it's, it has a clean workflow um, with uncluttered screens, um, and that is just imperative for a good user experience. Um, we've been through quite a few iterations um, of uh, the UI, and um, definitely what I've noticed is, you know, people don't really read everything that's on the screen. They, you know, seem to skim things or, or don't take notice. So it's imperative that you make it as simple as possible um, and as clear as possible for people to use. Um, our kiosk also provides, we have a secure delivery platform. 
um, which just locks in the um, software app to the kiosk. So um, you can't use the kiosk for any other use other than checking in. Um, there are some you know, uh, vendors or situations out there where um, basically apps are just being used or sort of on a browser mode and you know, they can accidentally come off that and then um, you know, the kiosk could be misused for other purposes. Um, our software app is highly customer configurable. So, you know, we talk with clients about what are the features that they would like configurable and we've um, built that in, which takes us to the last point is that, you know, we have a really easy to use admin interface where the um, administrator can, you know, configure the different features um, and also, you know, change what's shown on the kiosk in terms of the um, questions asked and what the, um, some of the outcome messages that come, it's all very configurable. Um, also uh, in the admin interface, we have, um, you know, a very clean and clear dashboard. And also um, we have menus, which we change the configurations and also you can run um, reports on how your kiosk is working. Oh, so here we're just going to show a little video demonstration. Hope everybody can see that. Is that what you're clear now? Yep, that's clear now. Yep. So basically, just focus on the left hand side of the chicken kiosk. Oh, yep, where you just put your name in and then you choose the simple swiping for your um, month and the day you were born. You confirm that. You answer these questions, which are all configurable. And once you've answered them, you get your details um, where you can either you know, change or update information. So here we're just um, adding the email address and you can enter your emergency contact um, details. Save these, phone number. Cool. So once you've made the changes, you'll go yes. So what's that done is now that sends back into the um, uh, MedTech patient management system and updates the details there. So in that picture, it told you which waiting room to go to. Just to the right here, this is the kiosk dashboard where the administrator go in. They'll choose the kiosk they're looking at. So on the left are the settings. You can see all the different things that you can change. Here we're just going to show you the screening questions um, where you can add more screening questions if you want more questions. So you just type it in. So once you've typed in, you just save it and you'll submit it. And then if we just go back to the actual kiosk, so that will go through to the kiosk, we'll update the kiosk once you've submitted it. So here we check in again, and we'll type in our last name, select our date of birth and confirm. And that was the first question. And then that's the second question. So there's no need to come back to us to update, um, you know, questions and such like. It's, you can do it all yourself. And, you know, that might change from week to week, depending um, on the situation. Oh, so here was just some reports that we've got. Um, so session status for the month. And just to show um, basically a graph of what it does here. Submit. So then it just downloads the graph and you'll see, you know, how many chickens were successful, um, what, what failed and yeah. So that's basically the um, demonstration. Oh, okay. Cool. Do you want to talk to this Yep. Yeah, cool. Uh, so, uh, so here's a quick sort of a snapshot of what we found um, as a result of the um, the uh, check-in systems uh, and this is all um, these numbers we pulled out of the reports which we just looked at in the back end um, so obviously the 30 second average check-in time uh, per person or per patient um, there's been a huge and significant reduction in queues uh, which is great to allow the frontline staff to uh, concentrate on other roles um, and, uh, and spend less time with customers 
um, there's a two and a half minutes time saved per patient check-in. Uh, so that over the space of an, a day or a week, um, given it uh, per reception staff, uh, that, that can, it contributes to a, an awful lot. Um, and then we have the um, percentage of patients booked in um, using the kiosk, uh, which resulted in a successful check-in. So the numbers are really good and um, they continue to get better. Cool. So just a little bit about um, the future developments of the um, self check in kiosk. Um, a lot of people have asked, been asking for you know payment optional features, and um, we can we can do that. So it's not a problem. It's just that we need, uh, unlike the um, QSR industry, where you know you're only needing to calculate the number of um, price of burgers, um, it's a little bit more complicated. So um, we can easily add the payment terminal to the kiosk. And so you can see um, what that looks like in the photo there of that kiosk with the payment terminal. Um, and we need to decide, you know, is the patient going to pay when they check in or are they going to pay after the consultation? Um, so basically, um, you know, we want to be able to interface with um, systems like MedTech so that we can actually query the accounts of the um, a patient and then um, for example if they have you know large outstanding payments um, when they come to check in you know we could actually see that oh they're owing more than say you know that you, you would most probably be able to set the limit but if it was say more than fifty dollars um, they wouldn't be able to check in and they would be directed to go to the um, reception um, so that the receptionist can follow up on that so we're wanting to develop sort of real-time interfaces to receive and send patient accounts data between you know, the patient management system and the kiosk. Um, but that is a, a future development um, which we're quite keen to move forward on. Another um, development is um, collecting patients' clinical data via the kiosk. So, um, for example, collecting the patient's smoking status. So I believe that um, that currently needs to be collected and it's one of sort of the Ministry of Health um, the stats that you need to report on. Um, so, you know, we can ask those questions um, and again, you know, send that back through to the patient. The other one is um, about utilising the um, clinical data from the patient management system where a patient is sort of scheduled for um, screening programs such as um, you know breast cancer um, or cervical smear. Um, then, if we know that you know something's coming up, we could potentially once they've checked in, um, we can show up a message which says you know that they're due for a cervical screening examination and they should go to reception to um, make an appointment. Um, so there's quite a bit of workflow involved in that. Um, we sort of yeah we've been asked um, by one of our clients um, to do this, but we need to develop those integrations um, with um, you know our partners such as MedTech. And finally, um, we also are looking at a multi-language feature. Um, we're looking at you know sort of fully translated language options on the kiosk, and. Um, you know, we actually already have translated um, Te Reo, you know, Pacifica in um, Chinese language. Um, we, we almost went ahead and did this up because our kiosks are so um, customizable by the um, you know, clients that have them. Um, you know, if you change the question, then how are you, are you going to change it yourself into um, you know, uh, the, the different languages that you might have available on your kiosk? So, there's a little bit more work involved about how we actually um, develop this and how we actually deal with the changes. Um, we believe that, you know, we should have sort of like a fully, um, fully translated, fully immersed kiosk where you basically come to the kiosk and you select the language that you um, want to read it in and everything is translated into that language, but it comes with it a whole lot of complications. So we're still working on that. Great, so um, we won't go into numbers, but uh, just give you a bit of a brief overview of the pricing structure. Um, so whilst we uh, pride ourselves of being a, um, a SaaS company by a subscription uh, service, we have the uh, benefit, as Vanessa mentioned, of having a uh, manufacturing uh, facility custom building our um, hardware too. 
Um, so with payments, we're really flexible um, on the payments. They can be either paid monthly, upfront monthly, um, and uh, leasing options all over the 36 year term as well, 36 month term, sorry. Um, hardware is a one upfront, there's an upfront cost, one off. Uh, thereafter, the monthly charge for Florence's SAS and break fix agreement, which is um, covers any damage um, that may occur to the uh, kiosk. Um, and software is paid, um, uh, so that's for 36 months, right? Um, and customers can enjoy a, an annual 5% discount on, um, on the software, the SAS, and the break fix agreement um, if paid um, for a year in advance for three years. Um, we also are partnering with Quadrant uh, Leasing. Um, so uh, subject to finance um, criteria, the leasing option is uh, over three a term uh, for 36 fixed fee payments. Um, and that combines the hardware and software all together in one payment. Yep. And here we just have some um, testimonials from some of our clients. So um, um, this is D from Hastings Health Centre. Um, you know, they've really found the kiosk invaluable. It's freed up their reception team um, to do, you know, much more valuable tasks or spend time with the patients that they need to spend time with. Um, and then below, we just have one from um, Unisports Ortho, which is just up in Auckland. Um, it's a large ortho, a private orthopedic clinic. Uh, and basically there they um, had asked for a very bespoke um, non-integrated system, um, which we implemented for them. So, um, you know, the, everybody seems to um, believe that the chaos um, is, you know, working well for them. Um, and they really wouldn't want to be without them anymore. So that's our presentation. Very short, but we only deal in self-checking kiosks, and we pretty much know, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, what 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 we have. So if there's any questions, we'd be happy to take them. Okay. We have a couple of questions in the yep. Q and A yep. tab, so I could just mm -hmm. read them Seven out now. to you. So is it now customizable for screening questions for COVID health screening, i.e. smoking and allergy status? And can this write back into MedTech32? Right, so it is um, definitely customizable for screening questions for COVID. Um, that is a definite yes. Uh, the health screening smoking allergy status. So I guess that that is um, what I talked about before is, you know, if you're wanting to collect information and send that back into the patient management system. So that is something that um, we haven't got yet, but as I said, that is on our um, pipeline to, to, to do that and to have that integration with um, the likes of um, MedTech and other patient management systems to write that information back into the patient um, profile. Um, I'm in the kiosk now, print and encounter slip. Right. Um, yes, no, that is something that um, had been asked a, a couple of um, times from clients, but we, <laughs> uh, well, the, learning from our um, quick service restaurants, they used to actually have printers, um, you know, attached, uh, which would print out slips and things as well. Um, but they've moved away from that completely because we find that with, um, uh, you know, with um, third party um, hardware, it's very difficult. You know, if things start breaking down or it doesn't work, you know, it's really hard to get those things going. So. Um, I'm not quite sure what we've discovered is that with um, practices that are integrated to MedTech, um, they, there's a particular system where you, you, know, you wouldn't need to have um, the printed form. It's because the doctors will have access to a particular um, part of the MedTech software to see that those patients have arrived. Uh, that's what I understand anyhow. Yeah, but yeah. That's, that's, uh, and also I think also another point we're sort of um, we're trying to get away from uh, become paperless. Um, that's our solution, and mm. um, we sort of pride ourselves on that and um, trying to do away with it. But um, yeah, that's, that's yeah. I can't quite remember the name of the program that um, MedTech has actually um, that the doctors can use to see. Perhaps MedTech can answer that question. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, what's the other one there? Um, oh, slowly. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, whatever. Okay. That's the fastest. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. We'll just we'll, we'll do that. Um, but we'll just have a look at the other questions first. Does the COVID question us uh, right back into PMS so that can be seen by the doctors? Um, no, the the COVID questions do not write back. Um, well, in terms of because basically the questions are you you got to answer yes or no to those questions. So. Um, I'm sure we actually have that information, but at the moment it's not writing back into the doctor's records. Okay, any other question? Uh, so Trudy, um, does it work with both instances of METEC 32 and evolution? Uh, yes, it does. Yeah, that's easy. Um, and Chris, um, in relation to the ability to ask the question around COVID or flu-like illnesses. Oh, the, the same, same question, question. yeah. Um, so, so not at, not at no, moment. not at the moment. Um, so K, okay, um, how much does the kiosk cost? Um, so the hardware is 4950 up front um, and the, the software is on SAS is 110 monthly for integrated and $50 a month for the breakfast agreement. Um, obviously that it attracts a uh, discount if that's um, prepaid a year in advance for three years. Um, but I'm happy to talk you through those options. Um, one on one. Uh, so cool. if they answer yes to those questions, right. So if a person answers yes, you know, do you have COVID type question, they will be asked to um, stand aside or, or, or to go to reception. Sorry, I was thinking of our aged care facility one, but they um, do get asked to go to reception to check in. Um, if you can up in any cash that's we didn't have. I was promised this would be developed when we have. Okay. Um, yeah, so maybe this is from Richard. Maybe we should um, take this offline and we can talk to you about that. Um, yeah. Um, I can't, well, both Will and I have, um, you know, even though I've been here, both Will, 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 Will as our business development has really only been here for a year, so um, we were most probably not quite <laughs> privy to this information, but we will talk to you about the printing um, facility, Richard, offline, if that's okay with you. Um, so are they all the questions, to... we'll go back to the demo. This is the first part I believe I think you said, Richard. So here we got to add the name and we just do the So there's the question. This is updating the demographics. Sure, right. there's the waiting area. So we've got any more questions there? One more? We've got four. Uh, thanks, Richard. We've got those. I'll um, give you a bell. Okay. Do you have any more? Cool. Oh, oh, there's one question up there. Oh, here we go. What was this about? Are you able to get patients to an end? Is your vaccine approved by the... Yeah. So um yeah, so so the patient is up, able to um update and change their address. Um at the moment, um with MedTech, just the address is the one that doesn't actually get written back. So every time patient does change any information, including the address, 
what happens is that our system sends to the administrator um, a list of all the changes and what has been updated automatically and what hasn't. And I believe with MedTech, um, and MedTech might be able to throw something in here, um, is that with the address, um, that, that's not being updated automatically yet because um, they need to actually verify it. And it may be to do with this thing about the, um, what you mentioned there about the privacy commissioner. But I do believe it's on the cards um, to update that automatically. Um, yeah, so hopefully that's answered your question. Oh, yeah, so that's just correct, Richard, about the, um, so Richard here has said, there's a likely privacy breach on the initial data screens, meaning someone who knows a name and date of birth of a person could see the person's phone number and email address. So with the check-in, as we said, you can only check in um, if that patient's got a booked appointment and on that particular day. And also um, one of the features that we have is that you have a um, early thresholds. So either how soon a patient can check in and also a, a late threshold, which is um, how much after the appointment. So what most places are using is that a patient can only check in 30 minutes before the appointment and, um, and not more than five minutes after the appointment. So the person, if somebody was really wanting to go in and sort of find this information about someone, they have to know that this patient has an appointment and they need to go and check in um, using that person's name and the date of birth um, in that very tight um, time frame. So, because we have um, been asked about this before yet. Yeah. So I hope that answers that question. Hmm. Are there any other questions from the audience? Please meet the requirements. Yeah, so Rich has asked this, can we please check with the privacy community that the early and late threshold meets the requirements? Um, yeah, I'm sure we yeah, can do that. Yeah, of course, yeah. Great. 